this isn't just about great training programming and the stuff that I know that we specialize in. It's also about making steps in the right direction. And a lot of those things don't require the X's and O's of programming. Some of those are just Thank you. habits and behaviors in your I'm life. I'm so glad you said that. It's basic. You can start real small. You really don't have to get complex until later anyway. Yeah. So just do something as long as you're not hurting yourself or you're overtraining, you're applying the appropriate intensity. That's going to get your body more fit uh, and healthier. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the nine reasons why people stop working out. These are the most common reasons and what you can actually do about them. All right, let's talk about the reasons, because it's January. We've heard all the excuses. Everybody's, I mean, uh, well, lots of people yeah. have either started working out for the first time or gotten back into it or are trying to increase even the amount of workouts that they're doing. This is like, this is like Christmas for the fitness industry. Uh, like it is for retail, right? Just lots and lots of new people. And the problem is the vast majority of them buy, what month would you say everybody drops off? Right around March, April? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was everybody kind yeah, of stopped? Yeah, it's a good call. March. So, yeah. So uh, what we did is we wrote down just the, the, t the top reasons why people stop and then kind of the solution to, you know, either how to prevent them from happening or if it happens to you, how to fix that. Number issue. one, lack of motivation or interest. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. I think that, mostly has to do with the fact that people try to set themselves up with workout schedules based on their kind of motivated state of mind. So they overshoot their, their goals. So they're like, I'm not working out. Oh my God, I'm so motivated. It's January. I'm going to start going to the gym three days a week. And once the motivation has gone, it becomes too big of a, of a commitment. It's too much for them to continue. So I think the key to this really is to start or to avoid this is to is to start slow. Yeah. Start very, very slow, something that's manageable even when the motivation fades. And it's hard to tell somebody uh, when they're in that state of mind uh, because they feel like they're being so proactive and they're really attacking their goals aggressively. And that's, you know, nothing but good. More is always better when, in fact, when they take too much on, a lot of times that's going to be a deterrent for them to stick with it long term. I really like the idea of making a list of all these healthy behaviors that you would like to include into your life. And then your goal is just to try and implement those more and more as the year goes on versus setting little this. Little by little. Yeah. For, versus saying this, like I'm going to the gym five days for one hour. Or I'm going to do this program. I'm going to do it. Like here's a, here's a bunch of things I know that I, I should do more of in my life. It would make me a healthier, better version of myself. Make that list. And that could be a little, it'll be unique to each mm -hmm. person. And then make it a goal to to continue to implement those uh, on a regular basis. And don't bite off more than you can chew. Don't be silly and go, if you list 10 or 15 things, they'll go, tomorrow I'm doing all 10 of these. This is, mm -hmm. you know, start chipping away be at them. Be measured about it. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and slowly include them and, and build some momentum. And by the way, people who, who have achieved long-term consistency with exercise, it's not that they necessarily fall in love with the workouts themselves. Usually what happens is they fall in love with the consistency and they have workouts that they love and then they have workouts that they don't love. And some are great and some suck and some they hit PRs and others are they just feel terrible. But what they fell in love with was the consistency and the discipline of the workouts. And that's why they never stop. That's why they're so consistent. Right. All right. Today's giveaway is MAPS Symmetry, a great unilateral training workout program. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. And then if we declare you the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section that you won free access to Map Symmetry. Also, everybody else, we have three workout program bundles on sale right now. Each one of them gives you up to nine months of planned workouts. Each one is $300 or more off. Okay, so that's the discount. $300 or more off the normal price. Huge discounts because it is January. If you're interested in one of the three bundles, just click on the link at the top of the description below to get set up. All right, here comes the show. All right, this next one, this one's huge because uh, there's a myth around exercise that you have to do a lot mm -hmm. in order to reap any benefit whatsoever. So this, this next one is just lack of time. People are today more sedentary than ever, but they're also busier than ever. Everything is structured and scheduled. If you, your kids don't even go out and play on their own anymore like they used to, you have to schedule play dates. You bring your phone with you everywhere. So you got email and contact and just 
it's like everything is so structured out that it feels like I just don't have the time yeah. to dedicate the amount of working out that I think I need to get any kind of results. I don't think we structure this necessarily in order of like the most common, but I feel like this is one of the most common totally. um, that I hear all the time from clients because inevitably they have work, they have all these um, things they have to accomplish throughout the day. And then their priorities start to shift after a while uh, to where, you know, they start to kind of think, well, if I'm spending all this time doing this, fitness and, and I'm trying to improve and, um, you know, this is impeding on me being able to get my work done at work. I'm, I'm not spending time with my family. Like they can make, it's really easy to, to make, um, excuses in other directions, uh, when you don't, um, you know, properly set yourself up for success and do like just the right amount. I, I agree, but I think the mistake that m many of us in the fitness community make when addressing this is breaking down the math. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the common, saying you have the time. That's right. Know. The common, and, and I, I'm, I'm guilty of this as right. a, as a young trainer. Um, I used to do this where I would break down the total hours in a week, how much of that's working, how much is sleeping. Let's okay. Tell me the stuff you, Oh, you want to play with your kid? Okay. How much do you on a daily? And then you start to list it all out. Yep. And then you show them like, well, look at you all. You're obviously wasting four to five hours a day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't commit to me to get 30 minutes or an hour every single day. That's all I'm asking. It's more, obviously you don't want to do it. You know, so you use this like guilt yeah. people into not using that as excuse. Terrible strategy as a coach. And, and the truth is, even if you kind of know it's bullshit, that's not the strategy to, to lead this person to a successful journey. Or to lead yourself. Yeah. And so, yeah, right. If you don't have a coach and this is you, this is self-talk. And, and you think you're really busy and then you're like, no, I just need to commit. Like, don't overcommit, you know? And this is what I love about something like MAPS 15 is start with something that is a very easy commitment for you and be consistent with that. Like the habits and behaviors, the first one, meet yourself where you're at currently right now. Don't overextend. Maybe the long-term goal is to get to a place where you train every day for an hour, five to seven days a week. Great. But right now, start at a place that you know will be easy and then build momentum on that and then build time as you go on. And you can actually enjoy it. Right. Right. Like, which is, that's what was going to continue your effort in going into it. If you're hating it, you only last so long when you're punishing yourself. Yeah. The benefits of exercise uh, come from the adaptations that they induce and any amount is better than no amount. So meaning 10 minutes a day, which is 70 minutes a week, which will, will get your body to change and you will see improvements uh, in your health. So when people would tell me, yeah, I just don't have a lot of time, I would say, well, how much time do you think you can commit to exercise on a realistic basis? There was no wrong answer. I don't care what they told me. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, five minutes a day. That's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with five minutes a day. And you would see changes. By the way, as you incorporate five minutes a day or 10 minutes a day or whatever, and that becomes consistent, you'll find naturally that you'll find the impetus and the time to start adding more. That happens 100% of the time with everybody that I've ever worked with when time was an issue. Right. They end up finding more of it. All right, the next one is boredom. A lot of people find uh, working out to be boring at some point. Mm. Now, there's two things to understand about this. One is any kind of activity uh, that gets you moving, if you compare it to not moving at all, so long as it's appropriate, is way better than nothing. So... If you like to dance, if you like to hike, if you like to row or swim or stretch or lift weights or whatever, all of that is exercise and you can do any of that to become uh, more active. The second thing, which is kind of counter this, but they both, believe it or not, they go hand in hand, is thinking that you need to be entertained all the time while you do everything mm -hmm. all the time. Sometimes you just go in and you just do what you're supposed to do. And the reason why I'm saying that part is because no matter what you pick, there are going to be times when... Even the thing you enjoy, you're not going to enjoy it as much. Yeah. And you have to do it anyway, otherwise you're going to lose that consistency. A lot of the answer to this one is is literally reframing how you look at it. Um, one of the strategies that I like for that, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, which is looking at um, the exercise portion, which most people look at as like this, the means to get this body fat off, the means to change this body I don't like into something like that. Instead of that, thinking about, I want to get good at these movements, right? I want to get good at these exercises and going into it as if you're trying to practice them to be better at the movements. You're learning a skill. Right. Versus the outcome that's supposed to happen from the consistency of the training. Ultimately, I even if that is the main goal is to lose, say, 20 pounds or whatever. But when you go into the 
the workouts, look at them as like, oh, I want to get good at this squat. This is also why I like the format of like MAPS 15 for somebody who also struggles with this. It's just like, instead of overcomplicating it and trying to dazzle them with all kinds of different exercises and this long hour workout that they have to do is just from exercise to exercise and they get bored. It's like, let's just pick one or two really good movements that I know are extremely beneficial and let's get good at them. So, and let's really focus on the form, the technique, and the the strength that you're getting from it, and just hone in on getting really good at these compound lifts. This is a great strategy for someone who looks at the gym as a boring task that they have to do yeah. every single day. Now, the next one is injuries or health issues. We'll start with health issues. For Actually, they're both connected in the sense that your form of exercise needs to be appropriate for you. The only reason why injuries and health issues become an issue with exercise is because people are applying exercise inappropriately for themselves. Because ex exercise, first of all, it's this broad category of lots and lots of almost an infinite array of methods and ways to get the body to improve its health. And as long as they're applied appropriately, you could do this with all with in, I mean, if you're injured, rehab involves exercise, right? Mm -hmm. If you have uh, you know a bad heart there's a form of activity you could do to improve uh, your heart health, right? You can exercise through almost anything so long as it's appropriate. This becomes a problem mainly because people work out wrong or they overapply intensity or they do too much for their body. That's when it becomes well, a big issue. Well, I mean, I like to look at this as an opportunity to really look at what was benefiting you in your training and what probably wasn't benefiting your training and to be able to address that while you're going through the rehab process and really lean into it of, you know, maybe I wasn't incorporating enough unilateral training. Maybe I wasn't incorporating enough type of training that brought me outside of this sagittal plane of movement. Um, and this is where, you know, to, to be able to not repeat the same patterns, like this is a lesson that I hope that, you know, you take the opportunity to learn and to now incorporate things that you might have been deficient in. So when we were running the gyms, this was actually the, in the top three of reasons why people quit the gym. Yes. For sure is getting hurt. And in my experience, the number one reason for that is the over application of intensity. Mm -hmm. It's this mindset that I'm coming from this motivated place. I want to make a change. I want to get after it. I'm fired up. I'm excited. It's January. And they go after it and mm -hmm. they apply more intensity thinking that the more they do, the more they get after it, the better their results will be. Yeah, and it's just inappropriate for them. Yeah, not only is it inappropriate, it's also wrong. That's what I mean. It's, yeah. it's wrong. It's not, it is not the fastest way. They're a the faster way is the appropriate amount of intensity, which is more often than not a lot less. And by the way, this is a mistake even made by very experienced lifters yep. is, and again, my personal story, I made this mistake year in and year out where fall off the wagon a little bit, get back in it right away, know what I'm capable of doing, get in the gym and think like, I want to get right back to that place again. So I start programming the way I was lifting before. And the truth is I didn't need nowhere near that much intensity and volume to see change in my physique. And in fact, all I end up doing is adapting to that intensity and volume faster and then promoting me to want to increase it more and slowing down my progress. So learning to uh, less is more, especially when you're getting started and when, and you're talking about uh, intensity and volume. Yeah. I mean, that very much reiterates my point. It's like, if you don't learn that lesson and, and really take that as an opportunity to improve, you're just going to apply the same method. Like you, you want to rush through the process of rehab in order to get to that place that you felt like you're at your peak uh, to be able to now apply that same type of intensity and stress, which then you're just going to put you right back in that same position. Yeah, totally. The next one is financial issues. And this one is because people think that they have to go to a gym or have exercise uh, access to exercise equipment in order to get a workout that's meaningful. Because otherwise, what's the point? This tends to be what the attitude is. Huge myth. Huge myth. You need zero exercise equipment to have an effective workout. None. You need zero. In fact, I train people like this all the time when I would go to people's homes. I didn't even bring equipment with me. Uh, initially, I thought, I don't, what do I need? I need nothing. I'll just train somebody with their body weight. And there's literally hundreds of exercises you could do and movements that require nothing but your body and intention and good technique and form. And you get a great workout. So the fitness industry has sold this as a myth because they want you to believe that equipment is necessary. Because if you do, then you're going to pay to use that equipment. But otherwise, you need nothing. Not to mention there are 
many other aspects of health that I can begin taking steps towards that are, is going to improve my overall fitness that does not require a gym whatsoever. And that goes back to the original point I made about making this list of all these healthy habits. Like getting to bed before 10 o'clock is a healthy habit that costs you nothing. Yeah. Going outside and going for a walk two or three times a day for 10 minutes costs you nothing. Like there's yeah. it's getting processed foods out of your diet, quitting the Diet Coke, stopping the smoking. I mean, there's yeah. so many. It'll actually save you money. Or just eating less means you buy less groceries, right. you save money. There's many things that you can do. Okay. And, and what I love about that, like, so if someone were to come, oh, I can't afford to do this. I can't do that. It's like, okay, let's do the things you can do. There's a whole host of things that we can do to improve your health that will move you in that direction. And then what ends up happening, which is, is, is funny is that, you know, as they get momentum, they start to build wins. They start to see progress and yeah. change in their health. Now all of a sudden the funds <laughs> arrive, you know, they can now yeah. afford to do these things. And the truth is they really didn't want to do it that bad. They were looking at excuses for why they shouldn't do it. They didn't do the things that cost them no money or potentially save them money. Once they do start doing those things, they see the momentum and now they get a little more excited about it. Now I'm willing to yeah. maybe sacrifice something else to spend the money on the gym. That tends to happen. But even mm -hmm. if they didn't do that, you don't need equipment. That's you right. Just, just bottom line, you just don't need any equipment to uh, to improve your health and fitness uh, with exercise. All right. The next one is lack of progress. Okay. Lack of progress is two things. One is it's a poorly programmed workout. So it's a workout that just isn't designed very well. But here's the second reason, and this is the bigger one, is that people tend to only measure progress by the scale. If the scale isn't moving, they're not progressing. Thus, they're ignoring all of the other changes that are happening mm -hmm. in their bodies, like better mood, better libido, better, better energy, better sleep, less joint pain. Like These are all signs of awesome progress that we tend to ignore because all we do is pay attention to the scale. So then because the scale's not moving, this isn't worth it. I'm not going to do it anymore. Pay attention to everything and you'll find that you're actually progressing. Not always going to be on the scale, but you're going to be progressing in some very meaningful ways. Yeah, it's ways. much like any of these new habits. You got to build these like positive associations with it for you to really see all the benefits of it. Um, yeah, if you're just looking at that one metric, uh, you know, I'm not losing weight at, at a rapid pace like I'm hoping for. Um, you know, that's, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get discouraged and, you know, it's going to demotivate you. Whereas you build up all these other, uh, accounts for different metrics of like, what's going positively, my strength's increasing. I'm able to do more pushups than I did before. You know, I'm outside more often. I'm getting fresh air. I'm getting good sleep. You know, all of these things contribute towards your goal. Why, why do you guys think this is one of the hardest? I think I find, I find myself to still to this day, when I think of like family and friends, past clients, people I still communicate health and fitness to that this is one that I have to consistently reiterate. And, I th and is it because of how we've been marketed to for so long, like everything we tend to attach to the way because we, we value uh, the weight and the look in the mirror more than everything else. Even is that what though, it is? It's just a vanity thing. We're so yeah. vain as humans, like that. We're we're so hung up on. I care really more about that. Like, who cares that my relationships get over with my wife? Who cares that I'm getting better sleep? Who cares that I'm a nicer human? To be, who cares? Like, who cares? About, I don't look good, right? So that is that what it is? We're so vain I think that so. we, I we think ignore the other important signals. They do, and I think people become impatient because they want the scale to move so bad, not realizing that all these other positive things that they notice contribute to that. Yeah. They, they're, they're actually showing you that you're moving in that direction. Sometimes the weight loss doesn't happen for a little while, but the signs that you're getting that you're moving yeah. in the right direction yeah. are all the things that we listed. One day it happens all at once. And then all of a sudden, and you know, weight loss, muscle gain, those types of things, they don't tend to happen on the slow consensus, you know, kind of slow step scale. Right. It tends to be like, boom, I see some progress and I don't see any for a while in that one metric, by the way. But there are other ways you can measure progress. Now, I used to when I trained clients, I got really good at this because I would see them every week. So I would remind them. I we talk about things. I would lead conversations in a way to get them to notice these things themselves. It was very effective, but I did have to make a conscious effort to, you know, quote unquote, remind them mm -hmm. of these types of things. Now, after training people for the same person for a couple years, then it became something that they started to really value and see, and it didn't ha it didn't become an issue anymore. Yeah, I so I remember also following up and asking, and I would get you get a lot of times just like, no, everything's everything's the same, everything's yeah. the same, right? And uh, what I learned from that was m many of these people they weren't looking for those mm -hmm. other things, and yeah. you have to, and I think that's why part of why this is challenging. We are so vain, we're so hung up in the scale and how we look 
that we're not even really evaluating the other things. And then we just assume they're the same, right? Mm -hmm. your, yeah. your trainer follows up with you the week later and he, and you say, Oh, the scale hasn't moved. Then he goes, well, how's your sleep? How's your energy? How's your relationship with your wife? How, and you're, you're like, Those Oh, are fine. it's the same. Yeah. It's just, well, <laughs> is it, or yeah. have you been really mm -hmm. tracking the same way you look at the scale three times a day? Have you been asking yourself like, oh man, am I am I in a better mood? And how's my skin? How's my hair? Keeping how's a my journal sleep? throughout the day makes a big difference. Right, I, I, I like that advice because like, I feel like the, the, we we need to give more than just telling people to reframe or look at other things. Because I feel like this is challenging for a lot of people because you could say it all you want, but you still are hung up on the way I look or the what's on the scale. And I'm and yeah, sure I'm kind of paying attention to those things, but I'm not really, I'm not measuring them the same way I'm measuring my weight or judging myself in the mirror. And you need to, you need to be able to, and, and you know who has a really cool method so, so like this, even though it's not his weight loss, Rob Deerdick does this thing where he, he, he has tracked and he did this really diligently, all these aspects of his life, like the time he spends on it and then scoring himself. And so he can evaluate at the end of every month, like, where, where, where he, he needs to put his attention. Yeah, where he needs to put his attention. Wow. Qualitative is how you feel. Quantifiable is something you can actually take action on and do, right? And I just think that's a, now, obviously not everybody's going to do that, but I think it's a, an incredible exercise to have these things that you list off that we've we've been mentioning everything from skin, hair, sleep, mood, uh, relationships, like production, like all, and, and score yourself you know, on a consistent basis. And then when you look at, oh, I've been doing all these new healthy behaviors, be objective about, you know, are those improving? And if you see, even though the scale is not moving the way you want it to move right away, but a lot of these other markers are moving positively in the right direction, be easy on yourself, stay the course because the other thing's coming, I promise. hundred percent. All right. This next one is life changes. This one's a big one because uh, it's easy to justify like, oh, I just, we just had a baby or I just moved or my job changed or my God, this really stressful event happened. This is because people do not fully realize the versatility and the power of exercise and fitness. What do I mean by that? You need to use fitness or exercise and mold it to improve the quality of your life, regardless of the context of what's going on in your life. So that means that when things are a particular way in your life, and you're working out a particular way and it works great for you. Now things change. Well, now you change your workouts. Now you're not getting as much sleep and you don't have much time because you have a little, you have a baby. Okay. Well then you're not going to work out as much and you're going to work out at a different time of the day and you're going to do it in a way to give you more energy, not to sap you with the little energy that you have left because you're losing sleep. So, you know, stressful events happen in your life. Exercise now use it as a way for stress relief or as a way to escape. Everything's going great, getting good sleep, got a good diet. Well, now I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna go after it, I'm gonna push myself, and I'm gonna have these great hard workouts. If you take your workout and think of it like a Swiss Army knife or something, and you, yeah. and you, and you modify it, it's that, versatile. Now it's something that you do all the time. It's this wonderful tool that just makes your life better. Yeah. You know, this reminds me of listening to uh, Alex Hormozzi talk about what he thinks about morning routines. And the people that, mm. uh, you know, swear by these routines that they have. And he's like, I wish to, to battle the guy or girl who has got to have this routine in order for them to be successful at whatever they do. It's like, I'd much rather be adaptable and moldable. I'd rather be able to sleep on a concrete floor and get up the next day and still crush work and not have to have had all these things aligned. I find that same thing when it comes to pursuing your health and fitness journey is being able to be moldable with what's currently happening totally. in your life. And we're funny creatures like that. We finally find, you know, an orange theory class that we love and we love going to. And it's work. It, we're, it's on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays at this time. And it's like, all of a sudden you get a new job or a kid and that completely disrupts that. And then you just throw out health and fitness because it doesn't work with your orange theory class. And it's like, Oh my God, are you kidding me? There's you still so this many... identity there. Right? Yeah. Like your you... success is driven now because of the fact that you're in this one class that had this very particular way they did things. And it's just, it's kind of human nature. We just kind of get in stuck in that mindset that like, this is the formula now for me going forward. Whereas, you know, you do have to remain flexible and adaptable and, and be able to take on new challenges. No, look at your, look at your workouts and do this, look at your life and be like, all right, what do I need right now? from my workouts to make my life better. Wow, well right now I need some stress relief or right now I need a way to burn off extra energy or right now I need help with my back being tight or inflammation and then say, okay, how can I work out in a way to complement these things? And now the workout's gonna change 
as your life changes, so do your workouts. And when you do it this way, you create this lifelong relationship with exercise. And as a result of that, you're consistent. You're always consistent because it's always appropriate. The workouts are always appropriate and always benefiting you. By the way, this sometimes means you're taking time off as well. Usually it doesn't, but sometimes uh, it does. All right, the next one is lack of accountability. Now, studies do show that when people do things like have a workout partner or you know, they know people are depending on them, that they're more likely to be consistent. Now, I get that. Now, there is a, a caveat to that, which is if you rely on that, you create this or you rely on this external, um, you know, th this external motivation, this something on the outside of you that that keeps you consistent. At some point, you have to learn how to make that internal, because if you rely too much on that, um, at some point, you're going to run into some struggles. But let's start with the lack of accountability and how people can start out to help themselves with that from an external point of view. One of the easiest things you could do is just tell somebody, first off, pick somebody who you really value and you trust, somebody who celebrates your wins and mourns losses with you. So not a hater. You don't want to do this with <laughs> a, a competitive hater. competitive friend. <laughs> yeah, because if it's a competitive friend, you're like, oh, I'm going to miss the gym today. Sabotage like, you. Don't worry about it. Go eat a pizza. Who cares? Working out sucks, <laughs> yeah, right? Totally. You want to have that friend that really cares about you, knows how to talk to you, knows how to be honest with you, and just tell them. Say, hey, look, I'm trying to be consistent right now. Would you mind if I relied on you for some accountability? You know, check in on me or I'll check in on you and just be honest with me. And you know that person in your life that you can rely on that can talk to you in a way that isn't going to both piss you off or, you know, encourage you to do the wrong thing. So, you know what I think is a really incredible accountability tool is the Rob Deerdick device that I just gave, which is tracking. Uh, and, and I think, I mean, we see the, the studies that surround, um, you know, calorie consumption just by looking at and tracking your food consistently. Like that's a form of accountability. Mm -hmm. you're, holding, you're holding yourself accountable to just be aware of what you're doing. I think that has a lot of power of just tracking and yeah. paying attention. I think if you and you being honest with yourself, if I were to take my month goal of gym and all the stuff that I want to do. And then I break it down into days and weeks. And I, at the end of week, I evaluate that week and I, I score myself. Oh, that was, I'd give myself a seven out of 10. And I look, I have something I can look back and met. It was me who scored me. It's me who is holding myself accountable. I, I think it has a lot of power just tracking and paying attention to that. And you'd be surprised on how much more consistent. I mean, now that's as long as you track, right? Cause if you continue to track, it's extremely powerful. You know what people end up doing? They stop tracking because they don't want to yeah. hold themselves accountable. Yeah, right? and that's they don't look at it. That, I mean, I, I mean, I'm going through this right now. In I mean, what are we? January, the middle or almost the middle of January. And I told you, Katrina and I create all those habits. It's been very powerful. Just the fact that we wrote them down and that we're paying attention every day. It, have you done it? There's already been a couple of days where it's like, man, it got busy. I got sick. There's stuff going on, and I'm looking at my list, and I'm like, oh shit, the day's almost up, yeah. and I haven't accomplished any of them. I better do something. Like yeah. just that the fact that I'm, I'm paying attention is already a massive accountability piece for me to make moves in that direction. I think it's very powerful. I mean, yeah, this is a tough one. Cause I'm, I'm a very much of a self empowerment guy. Like I want people to evolve to the point where they can like, you know, be able to just do this by themselves. They don't need that external uh, motivation to kind of nudge them and, and determine whether or not they show up that day. Uh, however, if, you know, initially the, there's, there's also like financial accountability, right? So this is where I look at getting a coach, a good solid coach or somebody and like pouring, you know, a financial commitment and then having somebody on top of that, that's not your friend. That's going to sort of pull you, well, you know, we're fine. Let's just go have beers or whatever, you know, like a, a little bit more accountability in, in, in a non partisan kind of a, a, a party over here. Um, and, and the financial commitment on top of that and like being a schedule, I think also plays a factor. Yeah. It's uh you you eventually want to develop that internal locus of control, right? right. But external locus of control can definitely be uh, valuable, especially when you're first kind of getting started and you have to get through those humps of being consistent. All right. Last is the lack of proper guidance and instruction. You know, when we say exercise, or even when we break it down and say strength training or cardio or mobility work, those are still large umbrellas that accompany or, or encompass, I should say, huge degrees of different forms of exercises and how to apply them. And you've got sets and reps and intensity and different forms of exercise and different ranges of motion. And how do I do what and which one do I, you know, do which one's right for me? So I totally get this. Number one, you have podcasts like ours, and you also have a YouTube channel 
like ours, where we actually post video demos of exercises. Our podcast, the goal is to educate people, teach them on how to exercise properly, how to eat right. So it's great to listen. By the way, that also doubles as accountability. There's a reason why we do five podcast episodes a week. And that's because our goal is to give people enough episodes to help with accountability. Listen to a fitness podcast five days a week. You're more likely to want to exercise also uh, on those days. So you're more likely to get your two or three days a week because you listen to us uh, on a regular basis. The other thing, and, and nothing beats this, by the way, is hiring a good instructor, a coach, or a trainer. It, it is expensive, but when you when you look at the value that you get from it, I don't think there's anything as valuable or as worth the cost as the cost of a good trainer uh, or a good coach. Nothing. I mean, a, a good coach or trainer will profoundly, or has the potential, I should say, to profoundly, positively impact yeah. your life across the board more than almost anything else because that's what happens when you improve your health. So the cost of working with someone, if you apply it and they're good and it's a good fit, like I can't think of anything that's more more truly Even if it's short term. Yes. You know, even if it's a short term thing and you learn the the fundamentals and and you really like dig into the nuances like how to apply proper technique and um, you know, nutrition, like what I should, you know, structure, how I need help and how to even track myself, like all these things, you know, that a coach can really guide you and educate you through. You can apply that now um yourself going forward from there because now you're educated. You know, I I know I'm biased because this is our show, our business, but I, I actually, one of my favorite pieces of feedback that we receive, and it's by far one of the top, top three is that when people listen to the show, they're extremely motivated to, to work out or That's to right. exercise or just improve their life. And so I, I like the, that as a, as a great tool for this, because we, every episode, there is always some sort of tip for personal growth or improvement towards your health. And it doesn't always have to be the X's and O's of programming. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's a, yes. That's a, a level to this. Yes. That helps. Yes. That's great. Coaches. Yes. Can take you. But I mean, yeah. man, one of the things that we've always tried to provide in the show is that every episode you walk away with maybe a little bit of an ent entertainment, but most certainly you walk away with something that you can then apply to your life that improves your lots overall of areas for growth. Yeah. Lots of areas for health and growth. And so I think consistently just listening to the show and then, and plucking things out of there and implementing it into your life. And it costs you nothing, right? Yeah. The show is free for you to listen to. And then if you want exercise program, we have some for sale. And then we have stuff for free. We have the 30 days of, of training that we have uploaded on YouTube, which is a great place for people to start that. We also have the first week of our most popular fitness program. Yeah, for free. so there's a lot That's of symbolic. good free content. But to me, it's also understanding that this isn't just about great training programming and the stuff that I know that we specialize in. It's also about making steps in the right direction. And a lot of those things don't require the X's and O's of programming. Some of those are just Thank you. habits and behaviors in your I'm life. I'm so glad you said that. It's basic. You could start real small. You really don't have to get complex until later anyway. Yeah. So just do something as long as you're not hurting yourself or you're overtraining, you're applying the appropriate intensity. That's going to get your body more fit uh, and healthier. Look, if you like the show, check this out. We got more free stuff for you, okay? We just talked about guidance and instruction. Go to mindpumpfree.com and check out our fitness guides. They're all totally free, and they can help you with your health and fitness journey. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was hardest. for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 